Good evening. Lawmaker Kenneth Leung was in a foul mood after he found his clothes were stained by a feces-like substance during a LegCo committee meeting this morning. LegCo President Jung Yok Sing said they will look into the matter, but has ruled out reporting the incident to police for now. Edna J reports. There was a stink made this morning during LegCo's Public Accounts Committee meeting. About an hour into the meeting, lawmaker Kenneth Leung said there was a foul smell at his seat. At first, he said there was dirt under the table, but later claimed it was feces. Leung then stood up to clean his jeans and shirt, which were stained with a brown substance that smelled like excrement. Lechko staff immediately came to the rescue and cleaned the table. Leung then continued raising questions at government officials in another seat before he left the room to clean himself up. The meeting was held in conference room two, and lawmakers could select their own seating, which means Leung may not have been the specific target. I don't feel threatened. I'm just a bit annoyed. But of course, I need to continue my, my, my role uh, to interrogate the government officials during the Public Accounts Committee hearing. Leung said he has lodged a complaint with the Management Committee of LegCo and urged follow-up actions. I believe the Management Committee would convene uh, a meeting on Tuesday. In fact, it is their normal meeting, and then I think this item will be put to the uh, committee for discussion. Leung said the Secretariat has taken his shirt to a laboratory for testing to find out what the substance is. A team of people believed to be laboratory workers were also seen in the conference room in the afternoon. LegCo President Zhang Nyuk Sing ruled out reporting the incident to the police, saying they need to know what the substance is first. Zhang also refused to speculate if there is lax security in the LegCo building. I will not make any speculations until the Secretariat has found out what actually has happened. I have been informed by the Secretariat of uh, uh, Mr. Leung's complaint, and I believe that uh, my colleagues in the, in the Secretariat will uh, make due investigation and find out the truth. Zhang added the Secretariat will check what meetings have been held in the same room in the past few days and see if the room was opened without their knowledge. LegCo's Secretariat said they will check the building's CCTV for clues and inspect all rooms to avoid a repeat of the incident. The government has ruled that the government has sent out a memorandum to primary schools to stop territory-wide assessment drills and limit homework given to students for the tests. Education Chief Eddie Ng says it will go straight to sponsoring bodies and management and even send out warning letters to schools that don't follow the rules. Arthur Urkilla reports. The city's education chief revealed today that notices had been sent out to primary schools banning drills for the territory-wide system assessment and limiting the amount of students' homework. We are very serious about the, uh, the, the, the determination to stop the, uh, uh, the drilling of the TSA so-claimed TSA-related uh, excessive homework. For that reason, and uh, yesterday we sent memorandum to, uh, the, to every school on this subject. We got the five key points and a lot of detailed guidelines. Immediately, yesterday afternoon, all our education officers at the district level have already been in contact with each and every primary school, making sure they understand and would be uh, implementing this particular new policy uh, decision, these uh, new measures. Ng said some schools had already cancelled extra TSA tutorial classes and stressed the administration was serious, in making sure the guidelines were followed. If there's difficulty in this regard, our district education officers will have no hesitation to give direct instruction. If that's still having issue, we will go straight to the school uh, sponsoring body as well as the school management committee. And of course, this process is going to be extremely serious. The guidelines come after an Education Bureau committee tasked to review the assessment held its first meeting this week. The committee will come up with its initial recommendations next month. 
The guidelines are being seen as a makeshift response to parents' calls to scrap the tests for primary three students next year, to spare them from heavy study during the Christmas break. Since 2004, primary three, primary six, and secondary three students enrolled in public schools had to sit the TSAs as a way to gauge students' learning abilities. When asked whether the government would consider scrapping the tests, Ng sidestepped the question and said they were still useful and insisted they're a low-risk assessment that don't affect school rankings or student prospects. But schools say that's not true, complaining that schools with poor results face pressure from authorities to improve test scores. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. Commerce and Economic Development Secretary Greg So continued to defend the copyright amendment bill, saying its primary aim is to stop large-scale streaming activities online. Vicky Wan reports. The copyright amendment bill has been dubbed Internet Article 23 by critics because they say it will limit creativity and freedom of speech online. In another effort to clear misunderstandings about the bill, the government published an article in several newspapers today. It tried to reassure the public that some online activities, such as editing and sharing copyrighted pictures and songs, will be exempted from both criminal and civil liability after the bill is passed. Commerce and Economic Development Secretary Grasso took to the airwaves this morning to do his part in defending the bill. He said the amendment is not directed against individual users online, but is aimed at large-scale streaming activities. The Commerce Minister admitted the bill can't please everyone and that trying to do so would lead to endless debate. Different stakeholders have different issues that they would like to throw in into the bill and there is no consensus. If everybody wants their issue to be embodied in this bill, then we will take a lot more time in, in deliberation and we will never take benefit uh, to, to reap the benefit of our discussion so far. He urged lawmakers to pass the bill and added it could still be changed in future if necessary. Hong Kong's International Federation of the Phonographic Industry Chief Executive Officer Ricky Fong claimed the recording industry has suffered great losses due to the lack of adequate copyright protection. He said revenue has dropped from $1 billion in 2000 to just $200 million now. But the industry would rather settle copyright disputes through commercial mechanisms than through legal action, he said. He also refuted that they are studying a way to charge a collective royalty fee to host websites, allowing users to upload copyrighted items. On a related note, Chief Executive Lan Chen Ying posted a video on Facebook on Monday of him singing a song by local band Beyond. Some say this will violate copyright law under the amendment bill. When asked by reporters if someone's popularity will define whether their derivative works can be categorized as news reporting and waived from liability, Intellectual Property Director Ada Lur replied that the exemption will look at the nature of the incident rather than simply who they are. Vicky Wen, ATV News. The number of visitors to Hong Kong has fallen once again, especially from those from the mainland. But there's some good news. The city saw a sharp rise in tourists from overseas countries. More from Vicky Wen. Hong Kong visitor numbers continue to fall, with the latest figures showing a 10.4% drop in November compared with last year. A decline in mainland tourists contributed most to the drop, falling 15.4%. Those with multiple entry visas fell nearly 40 percent. But it's not all bad news, as Commerce and Economic Development Secretary Grass So refuted that more overseas tourists came to Hong Kong in the past two months, giving the visitor category a 7.6 percent boost. So said since the one-visit-per-week rule was implemented for Shenzhen residents in April, the types of visitors to the city are changing, and local tourism is developing in a good direction. New Travel Industry Council Chairman Jason Wong said the council is discussing with its mainland counterparts on ways to introduce high-quality tours to the SAR, hoping to attract more mainland tourists. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Hundreds of people scrambled to the annual Hong Kong Brands and Products Expo today, selling goods from furniture to food at bargain prices. 
Many who queued up as early as 4 a.m. tried to get their hands on $1 products, including washing machines. Vicky Wong reports. Hundreds of people gathered at Victoria Park this morning for the 50th Hong Kong Brands and Product Expo Fair in Causeway Bay. Many arrived early hoping to get their hands on $1 deals, such as washing machines and canned abalone. On your mark, get set, go. Shoppers scrambled as soon as the gates opened at 11 a.m. But just seconds after the expo began, staff of this booth selling canned abalone for $1 said it was sold out. Placards with the words sold out were raised. These are the lucky ones who managed to grab the offer. This man said it didn't matter how early you arrive. As long as you can run fast, you'll get the goods. While this man who was first in the queue for a $1 washing machine said he arrived at the fair at 4 a.m. Also at the expo was Chief Executive Leung Chun Ying and his wife, who bought some puddings, books and plants. The couple spent more than $2,000 at the expo. There are more than 880 booths in this year's fair, which is organised by the Chinese Manufacturers Association of Hong Kong. The expo will end on the 4th of January. Vicky Wong, ATV News. A final draft agreement to tackle global warming has been reached at the Paris Climate Conference. The agreement would cap global temperature rises to less than 2 degrees Celsius. The deal is being called a historic turning point for the world. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon called on diplomats to finish the job. Government ministers from around the world will now decide whether to endorse the agreement. Sport news and in the NHL, the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Los Angeles Kings duel it out in a shootout, and in golf, Charlie Hoffman and Daniel Berger take the lead in Florida. Looking to take a bite out of the lead, Charlie 